Since the birth of X-ray free electron lasers, researchers have been exploring how intense X-ray light interacts with single isolated particles in pursuit of dreams such as atomic scale imaging of complex biological molecules. But what happens when that intense light propagates through a collection of such particles? Can there be a back action from the particles onto the light wave itself? We know from early studies with optical lasers in the 1960s that simply shining an intense laser onto a gas can generate many new colors of light in a process called stimulated Raman scattering, where the light wave exchanges energy with the gas's vibrational degrees of freedom. And not only does the propagating light become modified, but analysis of the components of that light provides information on the gas itself. Indeed, this phenomenon is an example of nonlinear optical spectroscopy, which was awarded a Nobel Prize in 1981 and is in widespread use as a diagnostic in many fields today. Can this process occur with X-rays? That is, with intense X-ray light impinging onto a gas, where we would access instead the electronic degrees of freedom in the gas. Could we do this with the standard chaotic light that emerges from the X-ray free electron laser? Earlier studies suggested yes, but a realization as a spectroscopic tool was elusive. This was the topic of my student Kylie's doctoral thesis, which started with the theoretical simulations of the process and an experiment to characterize the incoming radiation spectrum and culminated in this wonderful experiment at the European XFEL SQS end station. The experiment was performed at the small quantum system, the SQS, scientific instrument of the European XFL. SQS is dedicated to experiments in the gas phase with a main scientific focus on nonlinear studies, making use of the high intensity of the FEL, and on dynamical studies, making use of the short pulse duration. One of the main components of the instrument is the focusing optics. It's a pair of large, highly polished mirrors, allowing us to produce a very small focus in the interaction volume, meaning to create a very high density of photons, which is necessary to drive these nonlinear processes. The experiment itself used a rather simple setup. We put a gas cell into the interaction volume, focus the FAA beam into the gas cell, and then look to the transmitted beam at the end of the instrument where we have installed a spectrometer and a 2D position sensitive detector. That means we could, at the end of the instrument, analyze the spectral and spatial distribution of the FEL and also of the stimulated X-ray emission, which was produced in the interaction volume and is emitted in the same direction than the FEL beam directly. So the experiment we did was um, to observe this spectroscopic signal of X-ray Raman, stimulated X-ray Raman scattering. And the key component of this was to build a gas target cell that could provide a very high uh, pressure sample. In this case, it was a neon sample that we had to bring up to pressures of about six bars or even higher, but it turned out in the end this was sufficient. And propagating the X-ray through this gas cell and observing the spectrum that comes out and correlating the spectrum that comes out to the incoming spectrum showed exactly the signature that we wanted to see of this nonlinear spectroscopic Raman shift. So we really could see the excitation of individual neon atoms in the valence shell by attacking the electrons on their core shells. So it's an element-specific method that could also work in other atoms, of course, for that matter, to probe what goes on in the valence shell, the chemically active valence shell, but sensitive to each specific element. So the reason why we are so excited about our results is that we here establish X-ray Raman as a spectroscopic uh, tool. And this is so exciting because this method allows you to really watch in molecules individual atoms and how their specific chemical environment is different in different places of the molecule. Many people want to use this also in the future to explore also more complex systems with this method. And why it worked so well for us is that we could apply the, uh, this principle of super resolution spectroscopy in our case, which is very much akin to super-resolution microscopy that was awarded the Nobel Prize some years ago, 
where it basically is based on the fact that you can measure the position of a large object, the center position, for example, of a circle much more precise than the circle dimension size of the circle itself. And we applied this here to the spikes in an FEL pulse, in a free electron laser pulse. This consists of several spectral spikes. And we could now pinpoint the position of these spikes with a much higher precision that our spectrometer would have allowed us in the first place. The stimulated X-ray Raman process is one of the fundamental processes in nonlinear spectroscopy in the X-ray regime. And already the fact that we could measure this process at the ESQUIS instrument is already showing that we have all the conditions here at the instrument to drive these nonlinear processes. On the practical point of view, the stimulated process is a two-photon process. That means you excite a system with one photon, a molecule, for example, in an excited state, and you use the second photon of the same pulse to drive the de-excitation. That means you can really control the excitation and de-excitation by the photon itself. This gives you many advantages for application because you can produce a final state at wish. And this is useful for some photochemical reaction like catalysis uh, processes because you stay in the neutral system, you can avoid ionization. And ionization in the X-ray regime is quite often uh, the reason for radiation damage, that means in biological molecules, that you can avoid to introduce damages. And we expect, after having shown that it's possible to do the experiment here, that many new applications will come, mainly in chemistry or biological related experiments, where also for doing dynamical studies, the newly available attosecond pulses, with giving very short, ultra short pulses, will have a big benefit for this type of studies. Mm -hmm.